This week we've released uh, for the first time uh, some survey data that uh, Westpac has been running for five years now, um, uh, asking consumers about uh, their home ownership views and plans. Uh, it's a really rich data source that we've never really uh, used uh, for this purpose in the past. It covers all the uh, twists and turns of the market going back to 2019, provides a really useful benchmark in terms of uh, how consumers are approaching the challenge of uh, home purchase. Uh, and how they might be adapting to the situation. It also gives us a benchmark to compare against, not just during the pandemic, but just prior to the pandemic as well. Uh, and the 2024 survey results show some pretty clear, striking themes and some real gems in a lot of the survey detail. A lot of the focus is around home ownership plans, uh, buying and selling plans over the next 12 months and out to five years ahead. Um, what they're showing around buying plans is that most Australians are putting those plans on hold near term. Uh, but beyond the next 12 months, there's a considerable uh, backlog of plans that's set to come through. And over the five-year horizon, quite a few, about 60% of Australians are still p planning to purchase. Uh, so there's a, a, an economic element to this, but there's also a natural life cycle that drives uh, ownership decisions and uh, buying plans, you know, family formation or family growth, move to retirement. These sorts of things will be driving many of these decisions. It's not all about the economy, but I think this time around we are seeing some clearer uh, aspects of those plans reflecting economic conditions, the cost of living pressures, the affordability pressures and the high interest rates that are currently prevailing. When we look segment by segment, uh, there's quite different drivers going on. First home buyers, you know, that's really the pointy end of the cost of living uh, and interest rate affordability uh, piece. Only 2% of those surveys expect to become first home buyers over the next 12 months. That's extremely low. But that segment is still, of prospective first home buyers, is still pretty determined. Uh, about 15% are planning to become first home buyers over the next five years. So uh, they're determined, but it's looking like a slog. Uh, when we ask them separate questions around their deposits, they think it's going to take about six months longer uh, to accumulate a deposit than uh, when they were asked in 2021. Uh, and that deposit looks likely to be about $4,000 smaller than when they were, uh, when first home buyer, prospective first home buyers were surveyed in 2021. When we look at the upgrader segment though, existing homeowners, uh, they're actually looking to lift their activity near term. Uh, and uh, actually uh, quite a high proportion planning to purchase over the next five years. What looks to be happening in this segment is uh, the recovery in house prices has improved the equity starting point of prospective upgraders. And so they're now starting to move ahead, in many cases, move ahead on delayed plans. Uh, the last survey we ran in, in 2023, that segment was really downbeat on whether to go ahead with purchases. So upgraders definitely coming back into the picture and looking much better placed, uh, poised to buy. So around investors, it's a similar sort of story. They look uh, pretty well poised to buy. Uh, near term, but they also look to be finessing the interest rate cycle. The next six months they're not keen to buy, uh, but six to 12 months that window is much more positive for prospective uh, investors. And that clearly uh, speaks to an expectation that the RBA will be starting to move into an easing cycle at that point, widely expected from the, the back end of this year. Even the best laid plans go awry, and we, we saw that during COVID, where going into the pandemic there was uh, an expectation, that people, an intention to buy that really got put on hold, uh, scuttled by uh, the, the pandemic. Uh, and I think to a similar extent we've seen something over the last couple of years with the surprisingly sharp rise in interest rates, again putting many things on hold. Um, yeah, so I think even though we know uh, some of these plans may not be achieved um, and there may be some economic uh, side swipes that come along for people who are looking to do uh, do follow through on their plans. I think it gives us a really good idea around the psychology of uh, buyers and prospective buyers and where they're adapting to economic circumstances. So for example, in the first home buyer space, uh, people are becoming more open to looking in areas that they wouldn't have purchased in previously. Uh, they're becoming more open to purchasing other types of dwellings. So uh, units, the really striking thing was the, the shift in attitudes around townhouses. Uh, about a quarter of, uh, of first home buyers are openly considering a townhouse purchase rather than a unit, which is a bit static on the last four years ago, uh, or detached houses which are becoming unaffordable. They're also trimming their expectations around uh, the number of bedrooms. Uh, although interestingly, uh, another gem in the, the detail here is that uh, working from home is becoming a more prominent consideration for all buyers when it comes to a house purchase. Uh, of course during COVID that was a big deal but there's been a lingering shift there compared to 2019 pre-COVID. It's a much bigger uh, factor in people's considerations. 
Well, one of the big developments over the last four or five years has been um, the, the increased incidence of support coming from uh, parents. So the bank of mum and dad and helping uh, children with their first home purchase. And we get a lot of additional colour from the survey around that topic as well. We're asking uh, Australians how much, uh, what sort of support they uh, expect to be giving to their children for first home purchase and actually to put a dollar value on that support as well. Uh, it, that ranges from giving a property outright, about 10% of Australians plan to give their children the property uh, gratis, to providing uh, financial support or babysitting or other forms of support that allow them to accumulate a deposit. Um, so it's definitely very prevalent, always has been I think, but at the moment um, you know, I think the, the key take out from this survey is that um, that support may be starting to become quite stretched. Um, when we look at the dollar value that uh, people expect to be providing their children to buy a, a house, it's unchanged on four years ago. You know, that four year period has seen a significant rise in prices and made it more difficult for first home buyers. So yes, first home buyers are fi facing a bit more of a slog, they're having to use family support more to enter the market and that's telling us from the survey that um, it's requ a requisite to be able to purchase and that support is still there uh, but it's not as abundant as it might have been uh, three or four years ago given how the market's moved. So in New South Wales, uh, you know, that's the most stretched in terms of affordability uh, and buyers are adapting as best they can uh, in the state. Uh, in the main capital city, as I said, we're seeing people uh, you know, moving, gravitating towards the western suburbs where there are more affordable options available. Um, there's greater interest in townhouses and to a lesser extent units uh, compared to detached houses. Um, this may be one of the, the states where achieving uh, these uh, buyer plans may be the most difficult. Uh, in Victoria, it's interesting, the, the, the contrast in Victoria and Melbourne is uh, between the centre of the city and the rest of the city. Uh, buyers are gravitating to the suburbs. Uh, they're not interested in the centre city at all. Uh, and again, they're looking to adapt to affordability pressures. I think also cost of living issues are delaying the ability to raise deposits a bit more so uh, in, in Victoria. Uh, in Queensland, a slightly different theme again. Uh, in Brisbane, uh, buyers are becoming more open to units. Uh, nearly a quarter are considering buying a unit rather than a townhouse or a, a house. In the past, you know, Brisbane's been pretty reluctant to embrace uh, unit living or apartment living, uh, but it may be that that market has, has sort of got to a critical point where detached housing has become so much more unaffordable that these other types of, of uh, lifestyles are starting to be contemplated. Sort of within the, the, the city market, uh, buyers are tending to gravitate to the northern suburbs uh, compared to south of the river. Uh, in the case of uh, Western Australia, uh, this is an interesting one. WA seems to be uh, less affected by the income pressures than other states. So they're not seeing the same delays in accumulating deposits or uh, the size of those deposits they'll be uh, playing with. Uh, so that market seems different again. Uh, South Australia, again, uh, less affected by uh, the uh, affordability issues, less fussed on which parts of Adelaide people are seeking to live in. Uh, and it looks like it's a bit of a slower market that'll take a little longer to take over, but it's not facing these, these really uh, pressurised decisions around where and what to buy. So, so this is the first time we've really explored this data uh, and we're finding a lot of fascinating uh, gems in the detail. There are very clear economic themes that are playing into home ownership plans and attitudes uh, and we'll see how those uh, plans are achieved over the next year or two. Really we're, we're only just scratching the surface of the, the depth of this information in the survey. Uh, we'll continue to revisit it. There will be further iterations of the home ownership survey in coming years. We'll be able to assess how different segments have evolved uh, and how their attitudes may be shifting. But at this stage it's looking like a really rich uh, source of inf new information on uh, Australia's housing markets and will help guide our understanding of the psychology of buyers in particular. The content of this recording is informational and of general nature only and is not intended to constitute a research report or reflect any recommendation or financial advice. It has been prepared without taking into account your objectives, financial situation or needs and investment decisions should not be based on it. You should obtain your own independent advice before proceeding with any investment decision. Whilst every effort has been taken to ensure that the contents are correct and any opinions, forecasts, conclusions are reasonably held based on information at the date of recording, Westpac does not make any representation or warranty as to the accuracy or completeness of the statements or information contained in this recording, and any liability therefore is expressly disclaimed to the extent permitted by law. 
None of the material included in this recording should be copied, published or reproduced in whole or in part without the prior written permission of Westpac.